Hello everyone, Brad Petty back again from NPI Entertainment. Make sure you check us out online at www.npientertain.com. And today my guest is Hillary Gent. I've probably known her for about 15 years and this is the first time I'm saying her last name out loud. It is <laughs> Gent, G-E-N-T. What's up, Hillary? How are you? I'm great. How are you, Brad? I'm great. I see your uh, dog in the background. Yeah, Jack's always present. He's here for... What? All, all of our wedding meetings, and he's here at home for our Zoom meetings, too. So here we go. <laughs> What's up, Jack? Welcome, Jack. <laughs> thanks. So thanks for joining me today. And um, I've been wanting to have this interview for a long time, so I'm glad that you were able to sit down. Yeah. And I'm curious. Um, so you do a lot of different things, so I don't even really know where to, where to begin. You yeah. are an artist, <laughs> a, a venue owner, a gallery owner. Um, I would say probably a curator of art at, at different venues, an event planner. What am yeah. I missing? That's it. I think that's it. I think that's Is that it. it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. One of which, those that which one? Of, hey, and there's Dan. So my husband is the co co venue owner. Yes. <laughs> what? We already have a special, a surprise guest. Hey, yeah, Dan. Good, man. Surprise! Good to see you. <laughs> I, was, I was chasing geese. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't need to interrupt. This looks like an important event. That's all yeah, right. It's good to see you. Great seeing you too, man. That's Take my care. partner. That's my partner. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, no, Dan is the reason that 78th Street Studios exists. Um, he founded the building in 2001 and didn't really know what it would turn into. Um, but I think in 2008 or nine, we had our first event there and it was actually a rave. He didn't know it was gonna be a rave. But yeah. it was. Um, okay. <laughs> so the building itself has evolved over the years into so many different things, but it is known as Northeast Ohio's largest arts complex. And So this is 1300 West 78th Street in Cleveland, Ohio. It. it is a large, it's formerly the American Greetings Building, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. So it's their world headquarters and their creative studios from like the mid fifties to mid eighties. Right. And this is an awesome venue. I think I've been doing events there probably since the beginning. I used to do yeah. events at 1300 gallery with Marty and um, stuff with Derek Hess and, and um, the artist Basque and a lot of different folks who came through there. Yes. And um, Jack Prince started there. Correct. Um, uh, Alternative Press is, they're still located there? Currently still there. Yeah, I think they have about 30 employees now. They are, and they've been working through all of this. I mean, they are, they are, they are ready to go. Yeah, so. So it's a legendary, legendary space and it's, um, I don't even know how to describe it to, to somebody who hasn't been there. It's almost like a big um, warehouse that's broken up into different studios and galleries and, and mm -hmm. venues. Yeah, yeah, right now, if, if we count our smaller, like, cocktail offshoot venues, we have five uh, spaces that can be rented out for small events from, you know, dinner parties to cocktail parties to, you know, small little marketing events, um, all the way to 300-person weddings, wedding receptions, and galas, benefits. Um, a lot of nonprofit organizations host their, you know, fundraising events there every year, so... And we know each other because I've done a lot of events there, and I know um, that I've done weddings in the Hedge Gallery, mm -hmm. in Smart Space, yeah. and do you call it the Ramp Level? Yeah, Ramp Level, yeah. Right, so three totally unique and really cool uh, different spaces that can hold probably from what, like 75 to 300 people? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so... Um, how long have you been doing events there? Since in 2008, did you say? So I actually, I opened my business there in 2009. And in 2010, I started on board with the event planning business. Dan had already kind of founded it to some extent. Um, but my background was event planning besides art. When I, I graduated from art school, I worked with an event planner. Um, a lot of people know him in Northeast Ohio. His name is Peter Bouters. Yeah. Um, he does some really incredible um, events, and I had the privilege of working with him for almost seven years, and that's where I gained most of my um, event planning and design background. 
um, being an artist, I think I, I kind of fit into his business um, because of the design aspect and the creative aspect of it. Um, but after I kind of graduated from his business and worked a couple other different odd jobs, when I opened the gallery at 78th Street Studios, I realized like this has some real potential um, to be hosting all different types of events. And in 2010 is when we really started kicking off weddings, especially at 78th Street Studios. How many weddings are you doing there on average a year? Um, it's usually between like 50 and 75. Okay. And yeah. then you also have all the different art openings, any of the third Fridays, which um, the, the venue has become probably like pretty well known because of that third Friday series that you have, which yeah. how, how, how would you explain that? Uh, third Friday happens every third Friday of the month. It's a once a month free public art walk where we invite just about anybody that wants to come out in. Um, things have obviously changed a little bit now, uh, but it is a rather large event. Um, we usually see anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 people that come out to tour the building. And almost all 63 of the businesses have their doors open. So my commercial gallery has its opening receptions on those nights, for instance. Um, the private like artist studio spaces that are also small businesses, they open their doors to the public so people can enter their working studio space and see how their art is made. Um, we also have photography studios, we have recording studios. Um, there's a 100 seat black box theater that functions there it's Tuesday. It's, it's really a diverse variety of creative um, businesses, not just fine art, but it is, it's mainly art focused. So that's why we call it a third Friday and art walk night. That's crazy. You said 63 different businesses. Yeah. And wow. there's more room for more. So. And big shout out to uh, Bent Cran Record Shop, which is located there. An awesome uh, record store that has been around for a long time. It, it started out in Cleveland over by um, 117th and then moved yeah. to moved to 78th years John, back. John is fantastic. He's yeah, wonderful. for sure. So let's talk about also you being an artist. You have a very unique style and kind of funny story. Um, after we had planned this interview, my wife came down to me, or she, I was outside on the patio and she walked out with her phone and showed me a screenshot. And she's like, do you know her? And it was a <laughs> picture of you and one of your paintings. And she's like, she, I want to meet her. She seems super cool. And her <laughs> art is amazing. She's like, I, we need one of her paintings. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This I'll was like to to totally unplanned. And I'm like, this is so funny. I literally just talked to her about setting up an interview. That's and I'm like, I've, I've known her forever. I'd love to see which painting she was talking about. Cause it's, yeah, you know. I'll have to, I'll have to find the picture that she showed me. Um, but, so funny. Sorry. But I, but I always, Oh, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> they love zoom calls. I don't know what it is, but okay. Now you're in this. Okay. Cool. That's funny. Um, <laughs> I always know your paintings, you know, without even knowing it's yours because you have a very unique style. How would you describe that? And I'm probably going to have one popping up during this, this, uh, this, you know, the okay. playback of this. So, well, recently I've been very inspired by the water, and it's because I live down by the water. I live in Rocky River. I'm right on the river. We can be in the lake in, you know, less than three minutes on a boat or a kayak or a paddleboard, um, which we try to utilize as much as possible. We're definitely utilizing them more than usual now. Yeah. Um, but the water does something for me. I think it's because I'm such a multitasking, uh, busy person, the water is where I find, you know, inner peace and a calm. And it's also where I see incredible light and reflections and texture. And a few years ago, I wanted to challenge myself to create these really large scale waterscapes. And I usually painted with oils, with oil paint, and I just couldn't get the like fluidity of the water. I couldn't capture that. Um, so I started using latex house paint and I actually use a local brand, Sherwin Williams. Um, and I pour the paint on the canvas while it's flat so that I can create those layers of reflection and light and texture that I see on the water when I'm, when I'm there. Um, right. So it's a lot about how, how do I interpret the feeling of you know that peaceful meditative calm into a painting and really the the way i do it is by 
pouring the paint onto the canvas and that kind of creates a really like meditative process as well so yeah it's really cool it's almost like multicolored rivers running through the canvas yeah I like exactly. it yeah it's cool um how long have you been doing that for um i've been making those paintings those specific paintings since 2017 okay um, but I've been making art since I was a little kid. I mean, I, that's all I did growing up. I was a total, like, kind of an art nerd, really. Yeah. <laughs> you went to Kent State to study art, right? I did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I had a, a wonderful education there. Um, their arts program is incredible. I studied painting. I was in arts education, and then in the end of my sophomore year, I decided to switch majors and go into fine art. In regards to art, I uh, and I know this from a story I read today. I think it was in the Can Journal, maybe an interview with you. I think it was Brittany who interviewed you, maybe. Yeah, Brittany Hubeck. Yes. Yeah. So shout out to her. Um, yeah. You curate different. Um, how, how would you describe what you do with different businesses around town? Um, so we used to have a, a very diverse range of businesses that we worked with where we would curate art exhibitions into their, their public spaces. We're still kind of doing that. Um, the gallery kind of took a turn a couple years ago and really amped up. And um, so we're focusing most of our energy into our storefront location, which is at 78th Street Studios, where most of our exhibitions take place. And we have about six or seven um, main shows a year, but we still do pop-up shows um, around town, and we also work with local businesses to curate work into their spaces. Okay. So, for instance, there's um, a doctor's office in Beechwood that brought us on, I think it was almost three years ago, and every quarter we go in with a new 30 to 40 pieces of artwork, curate it into their office space, um, and it's all priced for sale, so we can sell work through the office too. And there are a couple other businesses that I'm working on generating those agreements with right now. Yeah. Um, but it adds a whole new environment of locally, locally made artwork into you know, a business space that's sometimes kind of stale and stagnant in right. terms of decor. I really like it. And I've actually seen um, something that you put together at a business before, and I wish I could remember which one it was, but it was years ago. Okay. And I remember, I remember seeing, you know, like your, your name on the card or something. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. I used to run bars and restaurants and I remember I was thinking like, I wish there was somebody I could call who could just, yes. you know, d d do this for me instead of me reaching out to all the different artists and trying to line up different We've done it with several bars and restaurants, and it was that was a really fun part of just networking with, you know, the city of Cleveland and and figuring out where it works too. I mean, not everyone necessarily needs that, but it was a really great way for the gallery to network. And um, we, I still love seeing local art in bars and restaurants. We've sold several pieces to local restaurants, and you walk in, and it's just it's so incredible to see original artwork in the space where you're having a drink and having dinner. Dinner. It just it makes the world of a difference. And sometimes venues sort of have um, an identity or like a brand related to the art that they display. Sometimes I think of venues and I can remember what they had on their walls and you know you remember that for years. Oh my gosh it sticks with you and sometimes you go back because you you love looking at that. Like take Touch for example. You go to their bar and you see those awesome Derek Hess pieces behind right. the and those are they're iconic I mean they belong there obviously and it it, it leaves an impact on your mind it definitely exactly yeah. exactly so you started out as an event planner and now you are working with clients putting together events at the venues that you manage so that's probably uh, a nice um, uh, added touch for those clients because they have a built-in event planner that comes with the venue yeah, absolutely. And we're very a la carte at 78 Street Studios. So, you know, if people have a, an event planner already, um, or maybe it's a mom or a friend that is very interested in being part of their event, they do not have to bring on our services. I would say mm -hmm. we do about 75% of the event planning for, um, you know, weddings and other events that are going on there. Um, of, oftentimes people bring us on because they need decor help. They need lighting. They need floral um, they need setup assistance. They need floor plan design. So people, it, it is very a la carte and I will always keep it that way. Um, same with 78th Street Studios. We will, 
never join forces with just one caterer. Um, we have our top favorites for sure in the city that we love to promote and they promote us. Um, you know, it's, we're a team that way, but um, we want people to come into the space and feel like they can personalize it. And if that means that they're going to bring in their own event planner or a completely different caterer that we haven't heard of before, we will allow them to do that. What are a few things that you would say are um, the pros of using your venues for events? What are some, some features that you have there that you've found to be helpful for clients who are looking at your spaces? Um, they're very flexible. So I, I think one of my favorite things about utilizing the building is um, using maybe the gallery space, maybe Hedge Gallery for your ceremony and then moving people through the building so that they get to experience the local artwork aspect during cocktail hour, and then taking them down into one of the main spaces for the reception. Um, one, I think it's easier on the couple. Um, two, it's easy on the guests. You don't have to travel all over town. Um, and three, you get to move in and out of different spaces. So you're creating this, this really interesting, fascinating backdrop for all of your guests, especially if they're from out of town um, and they've never been to a large arts complex like this before. I think one of the best comments we hear during a lot of weddings are, this is, this is Cleveland? We're in Cleveland right now? <laughs> This feels like somewhere I've been in Chicago or New York or, you know, right. and, and it's because it has that industrial vibe to it. Um, yeah. But it's, you know, it's taken up a couple notches with the local artwork. I think people feel like they're in a little bit of like museum setting meets, you know, vintage elegance in a way. It's, it's this interesting dynamic that goes on. And um, I think that's the most special part about it. Uh, like I mentioned, you can bring in your own vendors. I think people love that. Um, and if you don't want to use our rental equipment, our tables and chairs, you can bring in different things too. You're not, you know, programmed into this box, into this like specifics that you have to program your event through. Um, right. People have been to a lot of those, you know, where it's like, this is the table, this is the chair, this is the centerpiece, light the candle, here we go. <laughs> right. Here's your chicken or your, yeah. your pasta right. and here's the chicken dance, you know, like, <laughs> how many of so, those can you really go to, honestly? Right. The one thing I will say, because, so I, I run a DJ company and also I've DJed a million different events at 78th street. Every event I've done there has always been super fun. I think it draws a, um, a certain couple who, I don't know, yeah. they just want, they want to have a, like a really cool wedding. That's just a lot of fun. They're it's never, a, they're never uptight or stuffy or like super traditional. It's kind of just carefree and a fun party. Yeah. I think the whole, the word celebration is something I use with all my couples because we're, that's what we're designing. That's what we're creating is a celebration that represents both of their lives. And it's not something that's been, you know, nitpicked or Pinterested away. It's, it's both of them and it's in an Uber unique setting that represents them, whether it's right. because they're creative or maybe they just love, you know, art or graphic design or photography, whatever their background is. It could be theater or music, but I mean, sometimes it's not even creative. They just like the venue for its energy. Right. So you're right. We do get some really amazing couples and I feel so blessed by that. I People are like, yeah. Ooh, wedding planner, isn't that the most stressful thing? And I'm like, yeah, it definitely comes with stress, but we get to meet some of the most amazing people doing our jobs because they, right. they love being there. So, you know, they're not uptight and stressed like you mentioned. So Exactly. So you referenced it a couple of times. We're in the midst of COVID-19. The state of Ohio just announced that weddings uh, are allowed now. This probably came a week or two ago. And the guy, was it last? Uh, yeah, okay, so a week ago, um, the state is allow allowing weddings, and some of the guidelines include up to 300 guests. Um, they have to be distanced and seated a certain way. There's no open bar. There's no dancing. Um, yeah. it, there's just a lot of regulations in place. So how has that affected you? What, what's going on now with, with, with your couples um, and the conversations you're having? Everything feels very tentative. Um, I think the weirdest part about all of this, Brad, is honestly, I, by my nature, plan things. I plan art events. 
I plan with artists. I schedule out with weddings and brides and grooms and couples and events, um, sometimes two to three years in advance. So the whole aspect of planning um, right now is so tentative. It almost feels like I can't use the word plan with anything. It's, it's really hard and weird. Um, but it, it has definitely helped me stay a little more present and a little more thankful in each day that I do still get to continue to operate my businesses. Um, I think we're all trying to pivot the same way and figuring out and navigating these very strange times. Um, we're, we're currently really booked in like late summer to December. We have, I think, 35 events between mid-August and the beginning of December. And we're just wondering what's going to happen. We don't know. Right. Most of those people have hung on and I give them major props for doing that. Um, we hope they'll stick with us. But if, if the guidelines stay in place, which we don't know if they're going to, but if the guidelines do stay in place the rest of the year, um, weddings especially are going to be really different. Um, no dance floor, no music. There's a point in the night, as you know. As well, we can have music. We can have music. You can have music. You can have music. But I mean, there's a point in the night where the DJ takes it up a notch, and right. all of a sudden, the energy in the room um, rises, and the formalities are cleared out of the way. Like dishes are gone off the tables, and all of a sudden, everybody is up out of their seats. If it's a really good DJ or band, mm -hmm. which usually we have. Um, cause we promote people like you, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I will miss that. I would genuinely miss that if that's not a part of this year's wedding events. We're hoping, we're both hoping that those guidelines will, will, I, I assume, I mean, I don't want to speak for you. I assume that we're all hoping that those guide, guidelines will loosen up a bit. Um, and, and hopefully that's because the uh the virus you know this the spread slows down and and you know yeah. um it, things get safer but yeah i mean it's going to be interesting i mean my job is to get everyone to go crazy on the dance floor and stay yeah. there all night and it's like we're having to <laughs> rethink and and you know adjust to this as well so it's like we can still play music we can still entertain we can keep the flow of the night going we can still provide the ceremony music and microphones and everything yep. but getting everyone to go nuts on the dance floor isn't happening not That's, now and to me i just i just feel like any dance floor even if it's a small one with you know 50 people on it there just seems so integral to wedding celebrations At every single celebration i've ever you know designed and planned has had this this dance floor focus to it and um I just, it just seems so strange to me, but I, we will adapt. Um, hopefully, like you said, things will um, change and loosen up. And I think that's all going to depend on people's behavior. You know, obviously people need to um, respect what's out there right now and abide by what's out there in order to protect everyone. Um, so hopefully people do that because that's what's going to help open things up um, in a safer manner, I think. Sure. Are you still accepting bookings for 2020? Um, yeah, we, we are. Yeah, okay. especially, especially with the guidelines. Um, we don't have a lot of openings. Like I said, basically mid-August through early December, almost every weekend and some, some weekday evenings are booked. Um, but if somebody wanted to plan something July 4th weekend, let's do it. <laughs> and you mentioned weekdays. I think that's something that people should start considering because there's so many weddings moving to the fourth quarter of the year as well as yes. 2021. A lot of venues, a lot of companies are going to be really, really booked. Wow. And I think if couples start considering weekdays and even Sundays, Thursdays, Sundays, whatever, I think yeah. that you'll probably have some companies that are willing to wheel and deal with you on pricing. Absolutely. We've always joked about the Wednesday weddings. Like, how do we promote the Wednesday weddings? And I always kind of poo-pooed it. Like, nobody wants a, you know, hump day wedding. Now, it might be the thing. It really might. So, let's see. I'm all about it. Call me up. I if you're do. considering it, I yeah. will give, I will absolutely. give you a, 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 a wedding Wednesday deal. Well, and, yeah, absolutely. And I think the other thing 
is, is that it's, I think the wedding environment has always changed with the times. Um, you know, the, the country club wedding was a huge deal for a long time. Um, and then it kind of graduated into hotels and ballrooms. And now it's dispersed into venues that are, you know, more industrial spaces or farms, barns, things like that, you know, yeah. more rustic, kind of homey, intimate, warm feel. And at the end of the day, if everyone needs to cut their guest list down, which makes a wedding more intimate anyways, um, we might see things that happen during the week too, where it's like, you know what, all my people are here. No one's flying in from all over the world because I'm not having 480 people at my wedding. Right. So everybody's here. Let's get these 58 people together and have a sweet Wednesday evening wedding. Go till 10, 11. That's when weddings right. do anyways. So yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. I like it. Um, anything we missed? I know that you, you wear a lot of hats, so I wanted to make sure we covered uh, everything. Um, no, the, I mean, the only thing I'd say is, you know, with all those hats, it's interesting. They, they kind of all um, play off of each other. I when know. I, when I plan art shows, I'm designing something that's kind of like theater. And that's the same thing with any kind of wedding event. Um, it's, it's like theater, and you know that. You come in, you set it up, you make it perfect. The lights go on or off um, and people enter, you know, curtain goes up, people enter and there's your, there's your party. Um, oh, yeah. It's a lot like theater, but it's, it's everything that we do at 78 kind of goes hand in hand. Um, and it's something I miss right now. I miss doing it. It's Me very, too. It's very strange not to be at work on a Saturday. It's really it weird. And it's so weird. We were talking earlier before we started recording and we both have our next and I don't know if it's your first, but my first wedding is the, the last weekend of June, which is so weird to say. June 27th. Yeah. I'm meeting first with my, my bride tomorrow and their caterer and we'll see how it goes. We'll see what we're going to figure out. We kind of mapped out a floor plan for her that, you know, follows all of the guidelines. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So. All right. So if anyone wants to get a hold of you, they have a few different things they could talk to you about uh, running your venues, maybe yep. uh, looking at your own artwork or talking to you maybe about curating their, their business. How yeah. can they reach out to you? So we at Hedge Gallery, we represent um, 15 Northeast Ohio artists and um, they can reach out to us on either webpage, uh, hedgeartgallery.com will link you to the gallery. It'll also link you to our event planning business. Um, but if you want to learn more about the event planning business, you can go to events.hedgeartgallery.com. Um, or you can just email me, hillary at hedgeartgallery.com. I will respond either way. Um, one cool thing we just got almost finished with on our website is an e-commerce shop. So oh, cool. We realized that a lot of people are at home right now, still going to be at home for a while, and that we needed to turn the gallery environment into an e-commerce page. So if you go to the Hedge Gallery page, you'll see a shop option now, which is, you know, it's the whole virtual world, and I kind of had to adapt to it. Um, I never thought that I would, but we are, and it's it's something I think that's really important right now. So we'll see how it it taps into the event business, too. Cool. Any, uh, any shout outs you want to give, um, any, uh, artists, businesses, people, places, things. Oh my gosh. Dogs. I, dogs always. Jack, do you want to get on this buddy? Oh, there he is. What up Jack? <laughs> <laughs> that's my dude right there. That dude has been with me since the beginning of 2009. That's when I adopted him. So nice. my husband upstairs, I have to shout out to my husband. Yep. Mate. Shout out to Dan. Yep. Shout out to Danny's up. I, I don't know, probably watching some musical theater thing. Um, definitely my team, uh, Ariana McCall and Brittany Keem, they are amazing. They've been an integral part of the business really um, gearing up in the past like year and a half. And um, all our clients, I have to give our clients a big shout out. Anyone that has ever had an event with us, whether it was a, a gala or a benefit or a small dinner party, um, we've had some of the best um, wedding uh, anniversary parties and weddings in general our past clients and our present and yet to come 
we're so thankful uh, for your business and we're thankful that you think of us um, and that you decided to host, you know, one of the biggest, most special, amazing days of your lives with us. It, it means so much. It's so, it's so powerful to be a part of it and to witness it. So thank you. Definitely. Definitely. Shout out to all you uh, clients calling Hillary up because you are picking a great venue oh. and hopefully you'll call MPI Entertainment too. Yes. <laughs> Love these guys. <laughs> all, right. all right, Hillary. Well, thank you so much for joining me. We covered, I think, everything that I had uh, planned on, on hitting. So I think you did. good. Yeah. Thank you, Brad. Thank you so much.